welcome to Touch Base Thursday for April 22nd. I apologize, I am a little late getting down here. I just simply lost track of time today. Um, we will get started here in just a couple of minutes. I'm just gonna wait here for a little bit for all of you to find me live. And then we're gonna go ahead and get started here in just a couple of minutes. Um, make sure I got my little microphone here turned on. So as you're joining me, please tell me hello. Hi to Patty and Philomena. Hi ladies, um, welcome, welcome. I gotta make sure I have my volume turned off on my computer here. Hi to Pat and Nancy. Um, welcome, ladies. So tonight, do I have a treat in store for you? I cannot wait to share with you some new um, cards that I created. So, um, oh, thank you, Shireen. Hi to Shireen and to Rhonda and Penny and Carol. Hi, everyone. Hi, hi. So, um, yeah, I actually didn't have my hair up today. It's down because I had to present. I had a big meeting at work today um, this morning that I had to present. Um, so what we do at the university that I work at is we give away some student scholarships to um, students that work in our department. And I am chairing the committee this year, um, figuring out how out of the 30 students that applied, we narrow it down to the five that get a $1,000 scholarship to use for their education. So um, I'm chairing the committee, and so I was talking to our leadership team about how we're um, figuring that and, and figuring how we pick the top five. And so I had to present today. It was a virtual meeting over the um, computer, but um, I still want it to look nice and all that. So I actually um, did a little bit more with myself today um, than I normally do, but the presentation went really, really well. Um, and it's so awesome to be part of uh, being able to give to our students um, that are, have financial need and stuff like that. So it's really, really good. So anyway, I, a few more hellos. Um, I see we have Kay and Donna and Debbie. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So just a few things I have in the way of announcements. So here's my big announcement about Natalie um, that I am so excited to share. So Natalie um, found out, um, we met with her high school counselor, and she only needs two classes to graduate. So she's a junior, she'll be a senior next year. And so she is able to dual enroll um, her senior year at CMU. And she'll be taking, we're not sure yet, it'll either be two or three college classes and then just her two classes at the high school. So she'll only be at her high school till about 1030 in the morning. And then she'll be going to um, take college credit. And so she's going to actually take that at the university that I work at. Um, what the college doesn't pay, um, I'm able to get a tuition benefit or tuition waiver that will cover the balance. So that is our big announcement that Natalie will be um, dual enrolling at um, CMU where I work. It's going to be so weird having her there already as a student um, next year. Um, and she is going to be going into the dietetics program. Um, she changed from nursing. Originally she was thinking nursing but changed on that. And she now wants to be a registered dietitian. So we are beyond stoked that she, I did not realize that she was only needed a couple more classes to be able to do that. And it just makes sense to take classes for college credit than just to take, as her counselor said, fluff classes um, just to meet the requirements and the required class time. So I know you guys, I'm so excited for her. Um, she's uh, even willing if she has to, to give up a dance class to be able to take one of her CMU classes because it goes until 4.45 and her dance class starts at four. But um, she's excited about being able to try to get her master's degree done in about four years, which is what will happen. She will more than likely start college as a freshman with about 20 some credits with all of her AP courses and all that. So we're, we're just really happy for her. Um, we, we, it was a really nice surprise when we met with her counselor yesterday. So anyway, um, and then Claire, I think I mentioned that Claire's in the high school. She's an eighth grader, but she's tried out for the high school fiddle club, and she is their lead cellist. So we are so excited about that as well. And they're going to actually be doing a concert, so we're going to be able to hear her play. I have not been able to hear her play with others in forever, and I've missed those concerts. Um, so uh, we will be able to um, hear her play. So my short little Claire, who's a very short girl for her age, um, is with all these high school students, um, and she can keep right up with them. So we're pretty proud of her as well. Anyway, so there's my little bit of announcements that I have for all of you, um, things that we just kind of found out in the last, actually since yesterday, um, with both of the girls. So um, other announcements that I have before we get started, I just want to make sure you guys all know, if you're local to the Mount Pleasant, Michigan area, my BOGO sale was 
which is a huge opportunity for you to get your hands on gently used products for free. But my BOGO sale is Jan January. No, we don't want January. June 11th and 12th. Um, it's going to be in my house garage, so there's no steps for anybody to have to worry about coming down. Um, how it works is whatever you pick out of my retired product. So let's say you pick um, $50 of stuff off my retired tables or all the product. That becomes your free stuff, and you simply give me an order for $50 out of the new catalog. So um, you get my gently used stuff, and I actually have stamp sets and bundles I haven't even used. So all that goes in the sale. And then if you're not local to Mount Pleasant, I'm doing an online BOGO sale. Um, if you subscribe to my emails, so if you're not getting my emails and you want to get them, um, in the description of my videos, I always put a link to join my mailing list. Um, there's a, a Facebook group that I'm going to be posting everything to right after my sale so that you guys will be able um, to purchase things, claim it online, I ship it to you, um, and you put your order in online or give me your order, I submit it. So there is a way you can still participate in my BOGO sale, even if you are not um, local here. Um, let's see here. I think that's what I have in the way of announcements. I'll talk about my classes here in a little bit, but let's give away some prizes. What do you guys think? We will give away some prizes. So we have, from last week, the um, had the... Um, Blackberry Bliss Ribbon, and then the Blushing Bride Metallic Ribbon. So the winner of the um, Metallic um, Blushing Bride Ribbon is Frances Christman. So congratulations to Frances. Um, uh, Frances uh, just recently got on Facebook um, and has been watching me. Um, she has been following me on YouTube for quite a while and just recently got on Facebook to be able to join me live sometimes. So that's been kind of nice to have her live with me. And then the winner of the Blackberry Bliss Ribbon is Shelby Lavrak. So congr congratulations to you, both of you ladies. And I will get those in the mail to you um, this coming week um, so that you have them. Um, up for grabs this week. I went to my embellishment drawer, so I'm slowly starting to pull product for my um, BOGO sale. Going to be spending a lot of time pricing it over the next couple couple weekends. Um, but what I have up for grabs um, this next week is a package of the ice cream corner sprinkles. These are really fun if you have the ice cream stuff um, to sprinkle them on or to make little shaker cards. One of my Facebook lives a while back, remember I showcased how to make a shaker card using a clear envelope. So so these would work really really good for that and then I also have the ladybug trinkets um, and I love these ladybug trinkets um, I bought a bunch of them for um, Chloe's my granddaughter's um, for invitation and forgot to use them so I've got a couple packs of these so I have um, I might maybe I'll even pick three winners next week so anyway I'm um, gonna give a couple packs of those um, butterfly or uh, ladybug trinkets. Okay, so um, when I was trying to figure out what to share with you tonight, uh, my first thought was I wanted to share with you the Shark Frenzy bundle. I love the Shark Frenzy bundle and it's going to be going away. Um, however, the designer series paper that I used on the cards is no longer available. I used the, um, the paper goes with the um, Whale Done um, bundle from our um, annual catalog and it's all sold out. And so it was kind of like, hmm, I can't really showcase cards for you guys when you can't purchase the paper to make the cards. And I spent a good chunk of my time last weekend designing. Uh, a couple of my friends, some of you watching, um, got the pictures sent to you one after the other. But when I get into this this mode sometimes, when I have no interruptions, I can just design like crazy. And I can tell you that I've designed pretty much all of my cards for May and June already. And I'm just like, whoa. So when I was trying to figure out what to share with you, you know, I thought about something from the retired list. And I want to make sure you guys know that if you're still wanting to get things from that retired list, you only have a couple more weeks left. And so I, I should be kind of showcasing that, but I'm like, you know what? I'm excited to play with this new stuff. And so I wanted to share it with all of you as well. And so that is what I chose to do. You're going to be seeing um, some of the products from our new annual catalog and a suite called Hand Penned. And it has quickly become probably my favorite bundle that we have been able to get early um, as a result of me playing with it. The paper is gorgeous. So many possibilities and things you can do with it. And so that is how I determined what I was going to share with you all tonight. 
Um, I'm like, you know, I've got all these new things done and I'm excited about it. And I know you're going to be excited about it as well. So that is how, um, why you're getting a brand new stuff. I know you can't order it yet. You're not able to order this product until May 4th. Um, but trust me, you're going to be adding it to your list um, after you see it tonight. Um, now, if you have not yet received a catalog from me, please let me know. Uh, I know that most of my um, customers that I've been sending catalogs to have been getting them over the last couple, probably about the last week. So um, if you don't receive a catalog by the end of next week, please let me know. I want to make sure you all have one before the catalog launches and goes live. I have extras here. I'd be happy to send them out to you. So um, just let me know and we'll get that out to you, okay? But I don't want to keep it from you because it's gorgeous and beautiful and just loaded, packed with stuff that you might want to get. Um, other classes that I currently have open, I have opened my um, uh, posted for you um, Zoom class. And I just want to talk about that because I know a couple of you had some questions about um, why I'm doing a retired stamp set um, as a Zoom class on May 7th. So when people register for my classes that I do online and I include the stamp set, I have to purchase the stamp set in advance. So once I get the registrations coming in, that's when I order the product. So the stamp set I can still get right now. Um, the punch is on back order by a couple of you I know have purchased it it will be coming um, but we will send you in your kit all of this the punch out we can send the punched out pieces so you'll be able to have them to be able to stamp and you'll have your stamp set um, but I had to you know move my classes up I think I mentioned this on my Facebook live last week I had to move a couple of my classes up earlier into the month because of the fact that um, uh, I'm going to be gone on vacation the third week in May. And so I chose to use a stamp set and a punch that punch is carrying over that I loved and just hadn't had a chance to, to play with yet. So if anybody registers for that class before the catalog ends, the end of this month, I'm able to still get that punched or that stamp set for you. So I do know that it will be retired, but you're going to want it and love it to add to your collection. So you'd still be able to have lots of fun with it and you can still use it a lot. So just a little bit of an update on that. And then my bingo is uh, moved up a week as as well Bay, May 12th it's a Wednesday night will be my online bingo um, and registration is open for that I think I've got it about half full already so um, I capped my bingo at 15 registrants so make sure that you um, get in on that as well okay so that is all I have in the way of announcements I see we have a couple more people that have joined so hi to to Carol I see Carol and Lori out there um, I'm gonna transition my my camera down to my stamp area let you guys see a little sneak peek of my cards and then and we're going to go through them and I'm going to show you um, all the awesome products that I used to make these cards. Okay, so let me transition my camera down and give you guys a sneak peek of what you're going to see. Okay. Woo, look at those. Make sure I get my camera straight. I know they're a little off-centered, so let me move them into the camera here a little bit. So there's your sneak peek, okay? Sneak peek, but I'm going to take them all the way now so that you guys can't see them for too long. Okay, so I want to share with you the product suite first that I chose to use. Um, and again, those of you that know I like floral, you're probably not surprised whatsoever as to why I chose this one to share with you. So in the product suite, I move my ink pads out of the way so that we have, I'm going to shake the camera just a little bit. I want to get it straight. Sorry, guys. It's not straight. All right. There we go. Now I feel better. Okay. So in the product suite, we have this hand penned petals stamp set, and then there are some coordinating dies. Now this set sells together and you can get it together for 10% off and it sells for $46.75. Now, one thing I want to make sure and bring to your attention with our um, photopolymer stamp sets now, Stampin' Up! is now printing with all of the new cat the new um, stamp sets in the catalog. Um, we no longer have, like, remember how they used to print the images onto these clear acetate sheets? That is not going to be the case anymore. So instead, they are printing the images on the insert of the stamp set. So I'm going to pull this out a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. So you can see right here, all those stamped images are printed right on the insert. And the purpose for that is for you to be able to do, you can see I, I did it with a few of them. You can actually take your images after you're done using them and stick them down right to the back of the case. And then you have them there all of the time. Now I've also had a couple people say, well, what happens when your stamps no longer are sticky? 
So if you do use a photopolymer stamp set over and over and over and over and over again, it will lose its stickiness. All you need to do is take it to your to your um, kitchen sink or your bathroom sink and just use some hot, hot water and some um, dish soap and wash it and the stickiness will come right back. But isn't this kind of cool? So um, I haven't thrown these away yet from my stamp sets because I just want to make sure that I like the whole idea of putting my stamps inside of my cake but I think it kind of makes sense and it's a neat way to store them. So um, kudos to Stampin' Up! for coming up with that idea. Um, so uh, yeah, it's kind of cool. So I'm just going to take a moment and put these on here. And what I've been doing is then just storing my, um, my clear things, my clear pieces of paper that these are on, in a different spot. Just in case I ever need them or want to put them um, back between there. But I do like it a lot better having these simply be um, right here where you can just easily see them. It makes it so, so nice. So there you have it. They're all inside of there. So when you close your case up, they're all stuck on the inside. Isn't that clever? Really like that idea. Now you could also just put one of these on the top if you want, just to kind of protect it. Um, I've been putting both of them back in there for right now, just to, again, to make sure I like the idea of them being there. But I think that is so cool. So let me now share with you the dies that are part of this product suite as well. So again, the stamp set and dies together are $46.75 and mine are well used. So um, I used them a lot for these cards already. And one of these cards, oh, but I didn't mean pick out all my stuff on this one. But one of these cards is my swap card for my trip when I go to, to Maui. And then the other thing that I like to do, we call it surprise and delight. I always take about 12 to 15 little gifts of things that I want to give to some of my close friends that I've made through Stampin' Up. And this year I bought necklaces of the Hawaiian flower, the, the hibiscus, I think it's called. And so I'm going to make little cards and a little folder on the inside to put the, um, the necklace in. So once I get back from Maui, I'll show you that because I don't want to um, ruin the surprise for those that I might be giving it to. But this right here is designed to cut out um, this image right here. And then you have an overlay that will go right on top of it as well. So you you can do and you'll see one of my cards here that's what I did I didn't even stamp it but you could you could stamp it and then also put an overlay on top of it and then you have all of these little images right here that will color in the flower so these you kind of just stamp and color in the flower with the different pieces that you want to color the flower in with um, you also have this little piece right here um, this little flower so this is on um, this one right here you stamp this and you can put that on top of it um, and then it cuts it out and you have a neat little flower. Little ones here, you also have this little edgelet, which you're gonna see me, I use this edgelet on one of the cards. Um, so the dies coordinate as always perfectly with the stamp set with a few extra pieces and parts to go with it as well. Um, and then you have some um, uh, genial gems that came with this product suite as well. Now these gems I think are doo -doo -doo -doo, $8 um, and you'll see I've used some of them for my cards but they are in these two colors so they're really pretty. They coordinate with the designer series paper very very well. Now there was no ribbon that came with this or coordinated with this suite so I chose to incorporate this crinkle whisper white ribbon. This ribbon is carrying over into our next catalog and I just thought that this ribbon was you know paired really Really nicely um, with the the crispness of the cards because I used whisper or basic white for all of the card bases so the next thing I want to share with you is the designer series paper um, that is part of this suite as well because this paper is gorgeous so I'm going to bring it out one piece at a time I've used a lot of one of the sheets so let me get all these little pieces out but I'm going to show you one of them at a time they're similar yet different, and each one gives the cards a unique and different look. So the first piece is this one right here. So this is more of your yellows, greens, purples. And I'll turn them over in a little bit and show you the back side. Then you have this one right here. So pretty. So can you see that they're all like the similar but just a hair different? I kind of do that um, off center it so you guys can see them that way and then you have this one and then we have this one so so pretty and then this one and last but not least we have this one 
Okay, so they're all similar but different. So pretty. The They match the flowers. It is very pretty paper, Vicki. I agree. Like I said, it's gorgeous. All of the flowers in this paper coordinate with that stamp set, which is what makes it so nice. I'm now going to flip it over and show you the back side. And as you can probably imagine, they're all going to be in more of a, a solid color, um, coordinating with the colors in the designer series paper. So this designer series paper includes the colors of Basic Black, Blushing Bride, Cinnamon Cider, Daffodil Delight, Garden Green, Highland Heather, Mint Macaron, Misty Moonlight, Pale Papaya, Pool Party, and of course, Whisper White. So gorgeous paper, gorgeous paper. So when I have such pretty paper, I really like to use the paper and let the paper kind of guide my card making. So let me start by sharing my first card that I created with this. Let me move all of my stuff out of the way. And let me bring in this card right here. So we're gonna go ahead um, and start with this one right here. And so this one is, I used the designer series paper as my focal point. And what I did is I used, um, you know, so for my, I always like to, whenever I make cards, I really like to, um, I don't like to emboss the um, cover or the, the base of my card. So I always incorporate a layer. So you can see here I have a layer that's five and a quarter by four. And I ran that through, I pulled out some of the um, carrying over um, embossing folders. And these are the three that I used on mine. I used the Ornate Floral, which is my favorite embossing folder right now. I used the Tasteful Texture. And then finally I used the, I think this is the Cracked, is it Cracked something or um, Cracked Stone or something like that. But they're all carrying over into our new catalog. And then I just incorporated a couple of dies right here on this one. So let's make this card together. You're gonna to see how easy it is and yet how beautiful it turned out. So I used a piece of the Whisper White cardstock for my card base. Um, this is just your normal five and a half by eight and a half. And then I have that piece of five and a quarter by four. And this I simply um, cut again and then embossed in advance. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna layer this up before we adhere it down to our card. So my designer series paper is four by three. Again, a size in which I can get lots of it out of my 12 by 12 piece of designer series paper. And I'm just gonna adhere those two together. So one is, this is four by three, and this is four and a quarter by three and a quarter. And then I use dimensionals to put this down onto my card. I wanted lots of dimension on these. So I, and again, I love dimensionals. I think everyone knows that about me. I think it's probably one of my things I buy the most of. But I put um, a dimensional on all four corners. And then I put this down on the middle here. And then using my ribbon, I simply put it around the top up here. Uh, this paper is gorgeous. I mean, you I know you guys are seeing it on the camera, but it's even prettier in person. I may have to go hunt for a pair of scissors because I did it to myself again, where I take them off my table and then don't put them back. So I need to get a pair of scissors real quick. Luckily, everything is put away so I know right where they are. <laughs> So anyway, here we go. All right, and then I'm going to grab my glue dots and I'm just gonna put a glue dot on the end of each of these, this ribbon. I don't think I got one on the other one, did I? Oh, I did, okay. And then this is just going to wrap around the top part of this, like that. Well, it would help to put it on the right way instead of sticking the adhesive down or face up. And the ribbon's trying really hard to stick to me because it's staticky. So if you're having problems with this ribbon, I have found that it works really nice. Um, actually, Kay mentioned this to me because she was trying to make some cards for me at one of my events. Um, you wet it down a little bit with a damp cloth, and it takes out all of that, um, all of that staticky. So just like a little uh, paper towel and wet it down a little bit and run it on top of the ribbon, and then this ribbon becomes much easier to to work with when it's um, when you have static and issues like that. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut those off. And then this is going to get adhered down to my card. Now I find it much easier when I have an embossed piece to add the adhesive directly to the card base. And that way, um, let me move this up so that you guys can see me in the camera better. And then I cut out in advance a couple of these little flowers. 
So these are right here. And then these will all just pop out of here. So this is one of the dies from the, um, from the die. And I did one in Misty Moonlight. And then I did one in, I gotta find my Misty Moonlight one. Here we go. I did one in Misty Moonlight and I did one in the Blushing Bride. So I need to pick out, and I don't have a take your pick tool here. So I'm just using my scissors. My scissors kind of become my everything. And all I did was put a little bit of a dimensional on the back. Now, if you have the mini dimensionals, you could easily use those, but I just like to use the edges of my um, big sheets so that way I don't have any waste. And I'm just gonna put a dimensional, a little dimensional here in a couple spots on this and adhere this down to my card. So I'll put one right here and then I'm gonna do the other one. And I'll put this one on in a little bit of a different spot this time. So again, I'm just picking the spot where you really can't see, where you can't see where these are at. And I'll put this one over here like that. So pretty. I then used my gilded, um, gilded gems. They're not gilded gems. They're the, the uh, I call them the, the genial gems. And I'm just going to put um, a couple of these, and that one went flying, but I'm going to grab it with my scissors, right in the center of the flowers. So you could use the, the mint green ones, the, or you can use the clear ones. And the final thing I did is I stamped a sentiment onto my card. And I have a piece here of, at least I think I do, at least I think I did. Here we go. There it is. I have it sticking in the wrong spot. So I have a three quarter inch, I'm gonna move these up so I don't get them all dirty. I have a three quarter inch piece of um, a strip here and I am going to use, so in the stamp set you have thanks, anything is possible, congratulations. So on mine I used anything is possible. So that's the one that I'm going to use and I need to move my plastic sheets out of the way. So we'll put the anything is possible here on a block. And I'm using my um, Misty Moonlight ink and I'm just gonna stamp it in the middle and then cut this. I think I cut mine at a little bit of an angle, bring that back in so you guys can see that. I'm gonna cut this at an angle. Now you're probably wondering if this will be a class that I'll be offering and I'm here to tell you that it is. So those of you that purchased my kits um, to go or kits in the mail, um, or even if those of you that come to my classes here in my basement, yes, this will be a class, um, but I couldn't resist showing it to you all earlier. So any of you that are watching who um, come or purchase, you can say yay and jump up and down right now because you will be able to um, make this class. And then I'm just gonna put that there. And then my final, um, I put one more of these little gems right here on the end of this little this little tail here on this if I can get it on there the right way because it's sticking to my brand new nails but there you go so there is my first project hi Courtney welcome 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 uh, and to Nancy I see we have Nancy Bell on too so there's my, my first project that I created using that awesome 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 um, paper isn't that gorgeous I mean like not much to it that card is just so simple with that designer series paper that you really don't hardly need anything else um, done to it okay so the next one that I'm going to share with you and I want to talk to you a little bit about someone on my Facebook live a couple weeks ago talked about the adhesive adhesive sheets and I said oh my gosh yes so whoever said that thank you because you made me realize that I haven't talked about our adhesive sheets enough so this next card that I'm going to share with you is this one right here and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our adhesive sheets so if you struggle with adhering things together that are intricate you don't like to use the liquid glue or be lazy like I do and try to use um, the actual adhesive they have the Stampin' Up! makes adhesive sheets where this will glue down together perfectly. No stickiness, no nothing. It's amazing. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about it. And let me 
pull my catalog over to the page that this is on. So the adhesive sheets are on the page with all of our adhesives. Um, the adhesive sheets sell for, let me see here, you get 12 sheets, they're six by 12, for $10. So let me show you the adhesive sheets real quick. Um, so this, these are the adhesive sheets. And again, they come six by 12, so they will fit perfectly um, using, if you wanted to use a, a, a 12 inch piece of, of um, uh, designer paper or cardstock. Okay, so what you do, like what I did in this case, when I was cutting this out, um, again, you get 12 sheets for $10, so it goes a long, long way. But what you do is, in this case, I took one of these sheets and I cut it in half at three. Okay, so this is it cut in a half at three. I cut it three by 11, because that's how big my piece of the um, Blushing Bride cardstock was. Now what you do is you simply um, peel off, so on the back of this adhesive sheets, you have um, this, let me make sure I'm on the right side, I'm not on the right side. These, this will just peel off, there's three of them, and when you peel that off, you simply adhere your cardstock to it. So all I did was peel that off and adhere my cardstock to the top piece of this. Then when you run this through your, your, your machine, so I ran that intricate die through my machine, it cut out and I have that adhesive now to the back of this. Can you guys see that? So what's gonna happen when I, let me move this out of the way again, get back to the card. When I want to adhere this um, intricate piece, down to my basic white. I'm simply going to grab here and I'm gonna pull off this adhesive sheet and it leaves stickiness on here. So it's a double, kind of like a double-sided sticky tape is what I like to call it. So it adds adhesive to all of this. You just have to be a little bit careful with it being intricate as you're pulling it apart so that you don't rip it. Um, but I'm gonna, again, remove this very carefully and it doesn't stick too bad to your fingers. Um, you can see there it's sticking a little bit, but not too, too bad. And, oh, I didn't get a piece out there. Let me get that piece out. There we go. And then all you do is you line this up and you adhere it down. Whoops. I'm going to set it down, you guys, so that I can do it better. You line it up and you adhere this down to the piece you want it to go to. And then you push it down really good and it sticks. There's no stickiness, no nothing, okay? Uh, it's amazing. So if you're, you're looking at wanting a no mess way of gluing things together with intricate dies, the adhesive sheets are definitely something that you may want to invest in. Okay, so it's just, they're both, it's sticky on both sides. And then the, I wouldn't say the hardest part, but you just need to cut um, a piece of cardstock. So I kind of measured my die and knew that I needed this to be three inches wide. So it would fit on there. And I'll be able to get like four of them on there. And then this, the rest of this, you can even still get more little things out of it if I really wanted to. But it is awesome. It is, Kay. It is, it is amazing. And so I apologize if you guys did not know about these sheets previously because I kind of forgot about them and decided to pull mine out because I bought some and use them on my cards today so that you can see how easy it is to use that adhesive sheet and how awesome that was to put together, okay? So now on this card, I used a die. It's called the Contour Dies. And I don't have them here right now to show you because one of my helpers is diligently working on cards that I'll be sending out in the mail to a bunch of you. Um, but I cut these this out in advance. Isn't that gorgeous? And this is perfect to use on a card front. So these dies will also be available in our new catalog. Um, they're called like Simply Contouring or something like that, but they're really awesome dies. Um, again, sticking to my Whisper White or Basic White for all of my card bases, um, five and a half by eight and a half. And then on this one, I did a double layer. You can't see a whole lot of, this is um, the five and a quarter by four, and I ran this through the Tasteful Textures embossing folder, and then I just layered this on top. So you can't see a whole lot of the embossing folder, but just enough to add another little delicate edge to that card and so I just loved it. So I'm gonna adhere these two together with some of my um, my seal here 
And again, you're going to have a perfect little edge around there that everyone can still see the little, the little embossed part. And then from there, I'm going to add my designer series paper. Following the same concept, I used the three by four, and then I used the three and a quarter by four and a quarter. And this time I wanted to pull out some of the Blushing Bride. So even this side is gorgeous. Wouldn't that be pretty on there too? This paper is just stunning. So I'm gonna adhere those two together, and then I'm going to adhere this completely onto my card. And then I use some more of that awesome white ribbon. Let me make that straight so you guys can see it better here. And I added it right along the middle. So I'm just going to cut a piece. And using my glue dots again. So I received a couple boxes of glue dots from Stampin' Up! where the glue dots were on the opposite side. So instead of being on this side, they're on the inside. And I know a couple of you that came to my class were like, oh, these are different. Um, if I wanted to make sure you guys know, if you received any glue dots like that um, in any of your orders, um, please let me know. I can call Stampin' Up! and get them replaced for you. You still get to keep the ones that are wrong, so you'll be able to still use them. But please let me know. We can get those replaced for you um, and um, not cause you so much grief if you don't want to use them that way. So I um, wanted to make sure I mentioned that. So then I'm going to put this little piece underneath here and wrap it around like I normally do here and tie it and then just going to trim off my ends again this ribbon isn't that ribbon gorgeous with that so pretty and then I have this element that we already did again I showed you look at how easy that is and every single piece of that is adhered down there is none of that that's coming up so it just makes it so much easier um, to be able um, to get that to stick so then I'm going to use my dimensionals, which are hiding on me over here, and I'm going to put some dimensionals on this card, and we're going to adhere this down to my card like that. See, the neat thing is I can move that over a little bit because it was a little bit up too high. Using that exact same strip of paper, um, this one I am going to stamp using, let me close my, can't believe I left my Misty Moonlight ink open. I am really usually pretty good about closing my inks. I'm going to use the Highland Heather. So what I did is I just grabbed three or four ink pads that coordinated with this suite so that I didn't have to think about um, which ones I'm going to use because you can use any of them and they're all going to match, which is the joy of this. But I'm going to use the exact same one, anything is possible. Cleaned it off already, and I'm just going to stamp it on there. Close up my ink. And then cut that off. And this one I cut a little banner in as well, but this one I'm not. This one I'm just going to put on right straight on and not cut the little banner in. So I'm just going to put dimensionals on the two ends of that and put this on here whoops not upside down and then i added a few of those little green gems to the centers of these flowers to make that pop just a little bit and it pulls out the green from that designer series paper very very well so i'm just going to put one here in the middle i really need to be using my scissors because they like to stick to me so i'm just going to put these in the center here of these flowers and then this whole thing will get adhered down to my card base. So I'm just going to add some adhesive to this. I almost forgot to put it onto the card base. <laughs> and there is card number two. Isn't that so pretty? So you can kind of see that my two cards so far follow the same template a little bit um, with my paper, my designer paper being cut four by three and then just adding elements to the card. And there's minimal stamping on these cards, which is what makes them ideal for being able to offer it as a class and such. Um, isn't that gorgeous? So pretty. All right, so my next card that I'm gonna share with you, I'm gonna change it up a little bit and move it away from that um, concept of using the four by three designer series paper. 
and I am going to share this one with you. And what this, the neat thing with this is for this, I used a one inch piece of designer series paper. So my, I cut a piece of designer series paper that was one inch by 12. Oh, thanks you guys. I'm glad that you like the cards too. They're so simple and yet so, so pretty. I need to move my stuff out of the way. Bear with me. Sometimes I need like three tables here. <laughs> yes, it would make a really good um, Mother's Day card. Totally agree with you. Um, very pretty Mother's Day card. So for this one, I used a piece of designer series paper and I cut it one inch by 12. Um, and then I just cut it into four to so you know four um, inches. So I had three strips. So they're one by four, but it literally was one by 12. Then you cut it into thirds. And then I used the same pattern here and used the flower pattern paper on the inside. So this one, I decided to just use a little bit of the designer series paper, but still love the concept of how it all turned out. It's so, so pretty. So for this one, I also used Whisper White. All of my cards I, today, I used was Basic White. My goodness, I've gotta get used to saying Basic White. Um, I used the Basic White, and this one I used Mint Macron for a card base, in the, or a mat in the middle. And then I have a um, five by three and three fourths piece. I embossed this with the Tasteful Textures, and then that's gonna layer on there together perfectly. So I'm just going to layer that on there. And then I added again some white ribbon to that. So I'm just going to add some ribbon here along the middle. So I'm curious if any of you or many of you used the adhesive sheets that I showcased. I, I really think it's a good investment. If you do a lot of intricate die cutting, um, you know, you get for $10, you get 12 pieces. And what I really like about it alone is the fact that you don't have any of that stickiness on your fingers afterwards. How many times do you design cards and then you go to, um, and then you go to uh, make the next one and your hands are all sticky and you gotta go wash your hands? Um, that adhesive sheet stuff is amazing for, um, for not having issues with that. So, um, oh, and I should have added the designer series paper. So anyway, we're gonna add the designer series paper to it now. So anyway, this again was one by 12 piece. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the pieces down to my card. So I'm just gonna pick this up and add them down underneath of it. And I like to start um, kind of on this outer edge and line it up so that they kind of have the same amount of space on the top and bottom. So I start with the outer one first and then I do this one and then I go to add the middle one. So that way I've got good spacing and it looks like it um, looks like I've got it, you know, kind of perfect the way I want it. So I'm just gonna, again, I should have put these on before I adhered that ribbon. So, but you can see how easy that is to just kind of slide right underneath there. It works just fine. And then this one, I'm putting adhesive on the other side and going to put this one on here in the middle. So awesome. And then, um, so yeah, Karen, I agree with you. I usually forget about them too because, you know, I, I just, I'm always in a hurry to design my cards. So I just use what's in my little, I have a little bag and the adhesive sheets don't fit in the bag. You know, my liquid glues and all my other adhesive things do. Um, and actually, Courtney, I think it was you who may have mentioned on one of my Facebook Lives about them, and I went, oh my gosh, I need to showcase them again. It's been a while. So I think it, I think it was Courtney. Um, if it's not, I apologize. But it was somebody that um, recently mentioned it um, when I was doing that, and I'm like, oh my goodness, I need to showcase that. So um, then I used um, the layering um, circles, dies, and I'm just gonna do a little bit of stamping. So I stamped this image right here. So see how neat that is to just pull it out of there and not have to um, go hunting for it. Um, let me put it on a block here. And I used the Mint Macron ink. <laughs> yeah, thank you, yeah, Courtney, I'm pretty sure it was you. So thank you. We all learn from each other. That's what this whole thing is all about. I've always said that. Um, I'm just gonna stamp my flower here on this. Sometimes it likes to stick and I just bring it up with it so that way I can get a really good image on that. Now, if you don't like it really, really dark, you could have always, I could have always stamped off on that and then stamped on to be able to kind of have it a little bit lighter. But since I'm using basic black as my top color to put the, um, the word thanks on, it shows up pretty good. So I didn't feel that I really needed um, to worry about that too, too much. All right, so then I'm going to bring in the word thanks 
And using my Memento Black ink, I'm going to stamp that right here on top. Let me make sure I get that inked up really good. And voila, there you have thanks. And then I'm simply going to adhere those two together. So I have a little bit of a scallopy black layer. So those two will get adhered together. You're only going to see a little bit of the black, but it kind of pulls the black from the word thanks. And then that is going to get adhered down with a couple of my dimensionals as well. And it's going to go right here. Quick and simple, so, so simple, yet so, so pretty. So you could do that with any of the designer series papers and cut that one by 12 inch strip and then just cut it into four inches and alternate it on the back of your card. It makes it look really, really pretty. So love that. All right, so that is our third card. I'm gonna keep going. I may go over tonight, but you know what? I'm gonna let myself go over tonight because I've got so many fun things to share with you. So if any of you are not able to watch all the way to the end, I completely understand, but I have two more cards left and I really wanna make them both. So um, I'm gonna keep going. I, I like to keep it at an hour, but we're gonna go over tonight. All right, so this next card, and one of the things that I really love um, when, I, when I showcase products and new bundles, I like to show you the versatility of all of the different things. Oh, Lisa, thank you so much for your, that compliment. I, I really appreciate that. Glad you like my cards. So I try really hard to showcase everything that might be in the dies or different ways you can do things. So for this one, I focused in more on that one stamp set and die, or the stamped image and die, um, that I ignore that I just shove my dirty um, stamps on top of that. But it's this one right here that I, um, that I, I wanted to showcase. So for that one, and let me find my card stock and everything all cut out already. Um, now those I did um, stamp and cut out in advance just to save a little bit of time, but I want to make sure that you can see the detail. Can you see how this die on the top gives you that little bit of a, um, those little like half circles? Doesn't that look awesome in there? And so all I did was stamp them and then cut them out with that die. And then this is the card that I'm showcasing the um, scalloped edge. Isn't that really pretty? And it, when you add the, use a little scalloped edge, it scallops it and it gives you the little, um, the little stitched inside there as well. So really, really pretty. So again, um, I used Whisper White for my card base. Oops, let me bring that card back in. So I used Whisper White for my card base. Again, this is um, five and a half by eight and a half. So any of you, like I said, that are interested in this class, it will be available as an online class to go. Um, and it will also be um, offered um, as a local class here in, at my house in my basement. So um, you'll all have an opportunity to be able to get your hands on this class if you really, really like it. I cut a piece of designer series paper that is um, five and a quarter by two. And then, um, and I like to do it by two. So I, again, can use up all of that paper from that paper pa pack. And then I have, I cut it, this a little bit bigger, cut the edge lid in it, just so that you can kind of see that there. And then my layer, because again, I don't usually like to always um, emboss the, the, um, the base of the card. I always like to do a layer. So I know it's white on white, but it, again, it adds dimension. Um, Janet has the word perfectly. She knows me well. Janet comes to my classes here in my basement every month. So she knows my style very, very well. Um, and I forgot to wear, Janet made me, a, and those of you know I wear a hair bow, and Janet made me a hair bow that I was going to wear tonight, and I completely forgot to put it in. So it is upstairs in my bathroom, because I meant to wear it, and then wore something different to work today that didn't match, and so I did not put in my hair bow. But Janet, I promise I will. So yeah, she made me the most cute hair bow ever, so I cannot wait to wear it. And she brought it to me when she came to my class this last Monday, so, so cool. Okay, so that's just gonna fit on there perfectly. And then um, I used the Whisper White again, good old Whisper White, and wrap this around. No problem, Lisa, and like I said, I know I'm going gonna go over tonight, but it's okay. I'm gonna allow, allow myself to do that once in a while. <laughs> So um, I'm going to use the ribbon and I'm just going to wrap this around here. Again, it's liking to stick to my 
fingernails because it's a little staticky. So I'm just going to wrap that around, wrap that around there, and then adhere this down to my card like that. And then I used, oh, so guess what I forgot to cut out? I forgot to cut out these circles. And I know that I didn't cut them out because I cut this for myself and didn't cut them out. So I won't be able to finish the little circle. But imagine that we had the circles cut out. I would stick one of those <laughs> on there. Um, I am going to put this one on here on this side. So this one will go over here like that. And then I have a half of an inch piece of cardstock and I'm going to, um, so I, again, just a strip and I'm going to stamp the word congratulations on this one. So this one would be good like for graduation that is coming up or for, you know, I don't know, anything that you want to congratulate somebody on. So I'm just going to adhere this to my block and I'm going to make sure I don't get it upside down. There we go. And I want to make sure I get it straight. Okay, I think I have it straight. So I'm just going to stamp the word congratulations. And then we're going to cut this off. And then that's going to go down here on the bottom. Oh, I did cut a little banner into that one. So we're going to cut a little banner into it. And then same thing with our dimensionals. I use the little end pieces because again, I don't let any of this go to waste. So hi to Chris. I just saw Chris's comment come in that she has joined and welcome to my little sneak peek of some new product. So I hope you guys don't mind that I'm showcasing something that you can't get yet, but I couldn't resist. It was so pretty. I wanted to share. All right, so again, you're going to imagine that the little one is right there because I know I know I did not cut that. I prepped for this on Tuesday night and cut everything, and I know that I did not cut those circles out. So we're going to pretend that it's there, and we're going to fold this around, and again, trimming those off, and pretending our circles are there, that would go there. All right, so there's that card. So boo-hoo to me not having any circles, but the minute I pulled it, I knew I didn't have the circles, but that's okay. So those are just the layering circles again. So I know that a lot of you have already seen those and you know what those are all about. Um, so my final card, I'm gonna go back to the whole four by three designer series paper concept. This one's going to look similar to um, one of them that I made before where I used the adhesive sheets. I used, this one's kind of got the whole nine yards, the whole gamut. I used um, embossed um, mat, the contour dies where I cut out the scallop part. Um, so we're gonna whip this one together real quick as well. So again, Whisper White. I just think the Whisper White, Basic White, how about Basic White, um, matches so well and just makes these cards look really, really crisp. Um, that's, I think, what really, I think, it makes, it just pops that paper, just pops the paper right out. So for this one, I'm going to use, I used the Ornate Floral um, Embossing Folder, and then I have one of those contour. This is going to be, I think, one of my brand new favorite dies that I have, and I'm just going to adhere those two together, and then... I'm going to adhere my designer series paper. And for this one, I chose to use the um, pale papaya to put behind it to kind of pull out the flower color. So uh, you could have used any of those colors that you, you wanted to on that. I struggled with that. That was probably the hardest part with these cards was trying to figure out which one of those I wanted to use. Um, and then I'm going to put a dimensional in the four corners of this. So again, this card is going to have lots of dimension to it. Um, and that's gonna go into the center of that right there. But it fits perfectly, like it's just, it's meant to be. I don't know, I just feel like that's completely meant to be. And then I'm going to put my ribbon through here in the center. So I did put ribbon on every single one of these cards. I just felt that it was a nice little touch to it. I think it is. 
So now I will tell you, I know you guys cannot order this stuff, but if anybody um, wants to put in a minimum $30 order now through Sunday, I will send you three of these five cards that I'm showcasing tonight um, already made. So you'll have them already made up um, that you can just use right away. Um, visit my website at kimsbasementbunch.com. There's an order link right on my website as long as well as a host code right there. If you can use that host code, that would be great. And you will get some of these cards right in the mail because I'm making... Um, well, my helpers are help going to be helping me. They just don't know it yet. Make a few of these because these are the cards that I'm taking on my trip um, for my swap cards and to give to my friends um, for their little gifties that I take with me um, to give them. So um, I'll be able to have some of these made up. So again, anybody who puts in a minimum $30 order, now through Sunday night, um, you will receive these three of these cards already made in the mail um, as a personal little thank you. So you can get some homemade cards We're using new product before you can even buy it. What do you think of that? Um, this one I did the exact same thing. I cut out one of those solids and then I cut out one of the um, blue. This is in the Misty Moonlight and I also used the adhesive sheet on this. So this is going to peel off the back really, hopefully, very simple. With my nails sometimes that you gotta get it just right. Uh -huh. Okay, there we go. And again, you want to be really careful that you don't rip it. As I say that, I almost ripped it. You're just going to peel this off, and it just leaves the back nice and sticky, and it's perfect. It's a lot easier than trying to um, put the adhesive on it. So, all right, and then I'm going to move this out of the way because I want to be able to line this up perfect. So we're just gonna line this up in here and adhere it down. And again, it's not gonna be sticky at all. Makes it really nice. And then we're gonna put some dimensionals on there. And I'm gonna cut up some of these little edgelets because why not? So if you don't use those edgelets, please start using them because um, they, no one can tell when you use these on your cards that they're not a perfect dimensional and no one's going to peel it apart and look at it. So I like to use those. Um, it just, to me, it makes sense to use them. And then this is going to go on my card and then using the little strip of paper. So again, you can see why I just keep using the same paper over and over and over again. Um, I need to find my one that says thanks. Oh, I took it off. Let me clean it real quick. There we go take off my congratulations, put on my little thank you here, and once again, I left open my Highland Heather ink. We're gonna open up the Misty Moonlight ink, stamp the word thanks, and we're going to cut that at a little bit of an angle as well. So you can see it's not cut perfect. It's okay, because when I angle it, no one's gonna see that it was cut crooked. Little, little bit of a, a secret there. Okay. And I'm gonna pull that out. And then we're gonna put dimensionals on this as well. One on each side. And then I also topped this card off. Yes, this is a very pretty font. I agree, I really like that font. And this time I put it down here instead of putting it up there. So again, personal preference. And then I topped that card off as well with some of those, um, the little, I, I call them genial gems. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, but that's how I'm pronouncing it. And I'm just gonna stick some of these into the centers of my flowers. You can see how I do that. I just put it there and I just slide it off and it works perfect. Um, and there you have another card that I made with that. So let me bring in all my cards so that you can see all of them because aren't they just stunning? Like I said, I really think you're gonna be adding this to your collection because it's so pretty. Um, these are great for Mother's Day, for sympathy, for wedding. You can do so much with these cards that, um, you, you know, you just, they're gorgeous and so, so pretty. So I'm bringing them all back in for one last chance for you all to see them. Um, so pretty. And like I said, I decided to just show you guys new stuff this time because I, I what I was gonna show you, the paper sold out. And I'm like, I can't show you guys something and then you can't get the paper. So um, I might post pictures of the Shark Frenzy cards. 
Um, I do have that open right now as a class, so if it's something that you might be interested in, you'll be able to, to see the cards as well. But there you have all the cards that I made tonight using that beautiful designer series paper and coordinating bundle. So thank you all so very much for joining me tonight. I'm so glad you all liked them. Like I said, I, I usually don't like to showcase things you can't quite purchase yet, but I hope this gets you excited about our new catalog, um, gets you excited um, to get it in your hands. If you haven't seen it yet, let me know. I'll get you a catalog in the mail um, and get you just excited about the possibilities of what you can do with this beautiful hand-penned paper. So thank you all so very much for joining me tonight. I hope that you enjoyed it. And um, I hopefully will um, see you guys all back here next week for, I'm not sure what I'll be presenting yet, but I'm hoping that I still see you guys back here next week. Bye everyone.